Hey everybody, this is Tommy G. <laughs> I literally have a sick of that. But obviously in uh, Phoenix, Arizona, we're still here. We've been playing on a long home stretch in and uh, it's it's good to be home, but it'll be good to get out on the road soon. But let's just be happy for what we got. We were doing started off 0 4 in the season, won a couple straight, lost one, and uh, now here we're going to be hosting these California Gold Coats. It's a cross conference game, so this will be the only time this season we're going to play these people. Uh, how did we do last season, Pete? Uh, we we took took us uh, six to one. Oh my gosh. Yeah, so yeah. we guys. There's a couple new facers, facers here on the league. Uh, they picked up the 19-year-old right fielder, A rank. They're paying 14.7 million to the kid. She, I think you were saying, what was her stat on her? Uh, she, she's leading the team in strikeouts with eight. Yes, that's going to be. She may be someone they need to develop, but uh, I'm just afraid. You know, once she comes in her own, she's going to be. We'll be seeing her for years. Yeah, we will. This is you know, it's uh, her rookie. She's going to adapt to the to the league, and uh, she's got the the type of uh, skills that will will propel her to uh, quite the career, I'm sure. So uh, even though she may be struggling here early on in her first season, uh, I don't expect that to persist for too long. She'll probably get it together somewhere around the middle of the season, which is exactly where you want. You know, you want the team playing their best ball as you get toward the playoffs. So here in that move. Uh, to be helpful for us in the early going, especially after dropping our last game. Yeah. The only other uh, fresh face, new face, the one that we know, uh, second row there all the way on the left, the B ranked number 10 right fielder Juanita Hernandez played her last season in uh, Houston for those Crocs. So she, she's got a Gold Coats uniform on this season. Not exactly sure how she's doing yet. I guess if we go to their, their team stats, we could take it out right there. Juanita Hernandez, she's hit 316. That's respectable. And um, off the bench, yeah, yeah. There's no home runs yet on her, but uh, six hits out of 19 at bat, so that's pretty good. Uh, and also, let's see if we talk about a little bit of uh, player development since that last game. There's just some development issues. There's nobody, no moves around the league. Uh, Bertha Banks has got some. She's, she, you know, she can get some extra meditation, take a new training regime. Yes, sir. Steve Montstour has got a, is available to take some extra batting practice. And Ruby Green's got new contacts, which improved her contacts. So she's uh, she's got she's be hitting the ball a little bit wetter. I don't know if she's gonna be playing tonight. We'll have to see. We'll have to see what that means. Yeah, we'll um, have to see what the hitting coach suggests. Yeah. We'll tell you a little bit about last game first here, Pete. We'll, we'll go into kind of what's going on here today. Let's uh, not let's let's not <laughs> talk about how the announcer lost his cool at the end of the game. <laughs> it was yeah, it was a little well. Buster Biggs got the offense going for the Beatles and Tapper with this home run, and it would have been. Um, it would have been a uh, you know, two-run home run if Junior Torrance hadn't just gotten thrown out trying to <laughs> But the water bullets then answer in the bottom of the side when Christian Stone smashes this poorly placed changeup by Deshaun Levon way out over the right field wall, and it's a tie game early on. So we could tell that the you know the bullets weren't going weren't gonna to go down easy. Uh, it was going to be difficult right from the start. There you go. Yeah, it was. <laughs> Well, Deshaun, Deshaun Levon didn't have an awful game day. You know, he gets Sanchez Silvio here in the top of the third, followed by Amelia Kent to close out the side. But then Baca Harris continues the scoring for the Water Bullets in the top of the fourth, driving in another runner from first, all the way from first. And the Billy Bull, and the, oh, sorry, the Bullets take the lead, and then they don't look back. That, that was the problem, because Smoke Snow then comes up. And hits one over Gina Torn's head at shortstop. And this double brings in two more. Two more. And then, what's that? Yeah. I and was going to say, yeah, and it was kind of, you know, you could feel the thing starting to slip away a little bit. <laughs> and to make matters worse than D Miners, nails another double, bringing in another one. And the Beavles quickly fall behind 5 1 in the top of the fourth. Deshaun Levon. Drops Jackson then to end the side, but it was a little too. Bertha, yeah, it was. Bertha Banks does what she can uh, with this high arcer out over the right field wall. Barely made it. Uh -oh. 
It's her second home run in two games. Well then, Gina Torres adds to the offense with this single in the center field, bringing in another run. There's no one hotter than Torrens at this point in the season, Pete. Yeah, she's uh, she, you know she's tearing it up as well offensively. She's on the uh, lead. Uh, she's one of the league leaders in uh, batting average. So she's doing. Yeah, she's having a start to the season. Buster Biggs then brings the Beatles with a one run of the water bolt. So the next day at bat, bringing in Gina Torrens. But it'll be the last we hear from the home team as Christian Stone comes up then on their turn and rides this one from Dusty Winder into left field. And the runner who had just stole third comes in, putting Florida in front six to four. Winder then comes in and strikes up the next batter, Smoke Snow. But the water bullets add another after Stone steals second and Iceman Majors knocks one just past the glove of Winder out into center field, and Snow crosses the plate, making it seven bullets. That's where the scoring would end. And the game ends when Gina Torrens comes up and pops out to right field. Harris throws it hard to third, getting the runner, completing the double play, and finishing the B-Wolves off. It's a tough loss. Yeah, it was. It was not, it was not a good game at all, especially coming off of uh, the preceding game against the Water Bullets where the B-Wolves seemed to have everything in hand. To had everything going, Tom. It was it was almost the complete opposite of the last game where everything went the other you know, went the wrong way. Um, the game before everything went the right way, so it was a huge letdown. Uh, base running errors seemed to be plaguing the team a little bit, um, and uh, you know I, I don't know. Again, this the same thing with uh, <laughs> the name we didn't hear you mention, Hanley Dexteris. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who was once again? He came back into the lineup and, and went O for the day. So, you know, he's he's. I don't know what we got to do to get him going. But if you know, if he if he's not provi- you know, if he's not producing, he's wasting space. You know, I got I got somebody who can play shortstop. I, I don't. You know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, Gene Torrance. Right. <laughs> that's, yeah, I can move Torrance over there and bring back Freddie Knox. Put him at second base. We had a pretty good. You know, that that was the lineup that beat the Water Bullets in the first game. So well, I hope you know. to pop things together here. Well, we got six other games to tell you about before this one starts. Why don't you start us off, Pete, with the front runners at the Freebooters down there in Fort Lauderdale? You got it. The front runners and the Freebooters waiting for the front. Okay, the front runners jump out to an early lead. The Freebooters come back a little bit, but the front runners extend their lead and completely beat up on the Freebooters, eighteen to three. That was rude. The Heaters go visit the Jackson Houston Heaters to get five one. The Wild Pigs in the hot corner. Pigs 4-3. Platypi go out to Hawaii to play the Burners. It's close, back and forth, but the Platypi jump out and win at 8-3. The Saw Teeth and the Overdogs back and forth battle, but the Overdogs take it 3-2 in the end. Eight doggies blow the other LA team. The Blowfish face the Arctics. Blowfish win at 4-3. So, start us off in the pa- Pioneer Conference Pathfinder Division. Please. Pioneer Conference Pathfinder Division. The Blowfish sitting in top with a record of six and three, they have a half game lead over the second place Crocodons who are just behind them at five and three. You go down the Orange Charter division, it's those pesky wild pigs are six and three. They're at the top of the league with the Platypi. They share the same the same uh, position with the same record. They are a game ahead of the Oakland Outlaws who have made their way in there. They've got a five and three winning record this season. Yes, sir, down there, down there in the Journey division, the Sand Cats, our sister team over there, uh, Holding a game and a half lead over the Arctics, Sandcats with a record of five and three sit in first place in the Arctics at four and five behind them in second place. In the Explorer, the Philadelphia Frontrunners are five and three in first place, and they have a half game lead over the Houston Jacks. Down at the bottom is the Gold Coats are going to play today. Pete, I misspoke earlier. I thought the Gold Coats were in the other conference. Gold Coats are three and five, just like the Bee Wolves. So the one is going to have a little better than the record than the other. But uh, yeah, so we will see the Gold Coats again. Later in the season, we're going to go play them out at uh, Sakura Hills on Oakland. Very cool. In our very own trade division, the Water Bullets, with a record of six wins and three losses, have a half-game lead over the Sirloins, who have five games, uh, five wins and three losses, and sit alone in second place. Our very own B-Wolves tied for third with the Herbisaurs, both teams with a record of three and five, and they're both sitting at two and a half games out of first place. B-Wolves with a negative 12 run differential. Yeah, well, we want to. If we win this game, we get up a little and half step ahead of those herbivores. So that would be good to see. That would be nice. We yeah. finish it off in the Curiosity Division. Saw teeth uh, are, are 
and they're tied with the Moon Stars, also who are six and three. A couple of teams. They are followed a game and a half behind by the Warboots, who are playing 500 ball at four and four. Yes, sir, and they put a shellac in a, on us early this season, <laughs> earlier this season as well. They do. This brings us to game regular season game number nine of 44. It's the the California Gold Coats, who are three and five rotation aces, are going to be here against our B Wolves, the contact specialists. Both with the same record. The starting pitcher for the Gold Coats is going to be the right-hander, Caesar Austin. Caesar Austin uh, throws the ball really hard, puts good junk on it, and he's super accurate too. It's their it's their number one guy, so it's going to be a tough tough game to go against Austin. He's only one of the season though, with a 2.70 ERA, which is really good, and a 1.50 WHIP. Him up, uh, backing him up are uh, three of their best players, all of whom are locked in currently. B. Thornton at first base. He's got excellent power, excellent connect ability to connect, and about average speed. He's outplaying his uh, his uh, career averages right now. He's hitting 400 with two home runs. Nielsen in left field again, uh, very good power, very good uh, ability to connect, and very good speed. Again, also outplaying his career averages. He's hitting 160 though on the season with no home runs. And then Stewart, who's catching, has amazing power and about average ability to connect and average speed. But he's uh, outplaying his career stats as well, just a bit, which is what's helping these three players be locked in. They're all outperforming themselves a little bit. Stewart's only hitting 292, but he's got two home runs on the early season, Tom. Yeah, boy. It's not often you see all three notable players locked in, so that's that's a little a little frightening. you got to be careful throwing a Thornton and Stewart. Looks like they could take yeah. it out on either. They've already hit two long balls so far this season. Uh, yeah, it's also it's all three locked in players and two of them hitting below 300. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nielsen's only hitting 160. It's kind of paltry if somebody was locked in. Not just recently, I guess. Yeah. Well, they're going to be facing our star pitcher, Hurley Bender, the, the slinger. He's going to be out there. He throws the ball hard. He throws real crazy junk on it, and he's got really accurate. He started off with a loss, and they got the win, so he's even at 101 apiece now. He's got a respectable 3.94 ERA in the season and a 1.44 whip. It'll be good to see Hurley throw the ball. It certainly will, and the notable players... Our favorite players uh, uh, for the B-Wolves, Buster Biggs in left field. He's locked in. He's got great uh, exceptional power. He's got great ability to connect and, and great speed on the base pass. He's also outperforming his uh, his career stats as well. He's hitting 375 with two home runs. We got the tense Henley Dexteris playing first base for the injured Alora Franco. He's got uh, a little bit better than average power. He's got a, a should have a, a great ability to connect and great speed on the base pass. He is underperforming so far this season, um, which has led him to the tense situation. He's only hitting 185 this season with one home run. And then the person we've talked about most, Gina Torrens at shortstop, locked in. She does not have a lot of power, Tommy, but she is uh, excellent contact, excellent speed on the base pass. She's out her career stats as well, hitting 433 on the season, no home runs. Yeah, we're just showing on the ticker down there while you're talking. She is leading the league in stolen bases. Her and Yoink Sacks both have five in their pocket. Yes, sir. <laughs> that brings us to the lineup, Pete. I think there's a big surprise that we've been looking forward to for a while. Let's see what happens here. Getting the lineup for the second. And, uh, yes, we're going to get now. Um, we got Steve. Okay, Steve. Okay, never mind. Let's go out this way. Freddie Knox is going to start things off. He's going to be batting first and playing second base, Pete. Can you believe that? Okay. He's going to be followed by... Handley Dexteris. The, uh, he's uh -oh. a little bit tense, but Dexteris is going to be try and get him out of that funk. Um, he's going to be followed by Buster Biggs in left field, who is locked in and batting third. Batting fourth, cleanup. It's been a while, Pete. Elora Franco. All right. All right. The heck of the lineup. She'll be back at first base where she belongs. She'll be good. See how she nurses that injury. But she, yeah, she got one while back, but it's good to have her back. And boy, are we paying her for it. <laughs> Gina. Gina Torrance uh, is going to bat fifth to play shortstop. So she's going to be playing shortstop. But like I mentioned, Dexter is going to be playing third base. So for Bertha Banks, this will be interesting to see. Magic Moore is going to be out in center field uh, batting sixth. Billy LeBoink in right field batting seventh. Eliza Peck's going to be catching today. Steve Monstor is a little tense. A little tense. So they, uh, oh, no. Yeah, they put him on the bench, you know, let him, let him shake that up. Hurley Bender is going to be hurling the benders. From the mound, and he throws the forefinger, the two finger, the cut finger, the curveball, and the slider. Pete, you ready? I am ready, sir. All right, let's throw it down. They're throwing us down the field. Beautiful afternoon here 
on a, on a cool day, cooler day than usual. Got the, got the roof open, fresh air, nothing like it. Nothing. Red Rock Park. Yes. Just the right size. You know, if it's too big of a park, people can get distracted when you're too far away. That's right. That's right. Not a bad seat in the house, Tommy. Not one to find. I can't find one. We're going for the Gold Colts. Pineda in center field. Nielsen in left field. Thornton at first base. Stewart catching. Ballard in right field. Delgado at second. French at third. Pennington playing shortstop. And Austin on the bump. Coming up in the top of the first. Dunk Pineda. Peyton Nielsen and Braxton Thornton. They're going to take a look at Hurley Bender, who's got a 3.94 ERA in two games. He's going to be looking right back at them. The Dunk Pineda, the center fielder, is neutral and fit. He's got no average so far. Hmm. Well, let's get him an average, shall we? Yeah. Ooh. Ouch. He re it's a hit into the right field. Billy Boyd goes and grabs it. One pitch, one hit. Sorry, Not the I got start. a little, little lag there. Peyton Nielsen, the left fielder, steps up. Dunk Pineda with a uh, a uh, hard hit ball into the, the corner and right field for a clean single. So runner at first base. Ball one to Peyton Nielsen. That's inside ball two. Two balls, no strikes with no outs in the top of the first. That's in there for a called strike. Two balls and a strike to Peyton Nielsen, the locked in left fielder. That's in there for a called second strike and the Count is evened up two and two. Dunk Pineda standing at first base. That's a Ooh. shot that's foul along the first Jeez. baseline. Pineda with some speed over there at first base. A pitch, swing and a miss, and Nielsen goes down on strikes, and that's Bender's first victim of the day. Strikeout number one. Braxton Thornton, the first baseman, he's hitting 400 with two home runs, six RBIs. One out with a runner at first. Oh! Oh, and there it is. It Henley Dexteris is down. Oh. oh! A hard hit line drive to, to Henley Dexteris' face. He's down on the ground. Crap. He's injured. He's got a bit body contusion. Ugh. Runners at first and second now with one oh. out and, and decisions have to be made about Hurley Bender. He is feeling weak. Do we go with our next starter? Do we go with Japani? Wait, Mojo's neutral. Uh, no, I shoot. I think we got to go with Belfort. I think we got to dip into our. Yeah, I think so. Ah, son of a gun. Is it Belfort? Wait, who's got the highest stamina? Yeah, I guess it is Belfort. Jeez, first inning. Her Hurley Bender, the starting pitcher, is going to have to take a seat after that injury he sustained. But coming in will be Tats Belfort. Tats Belfort, the relief pitcher. He's got a 5.14 ERA, a 1.86 whip, and four strikeouts on the season. He's neutral and fit. He's got a little less than average velocity, average junk, and a little less than average accuracy. He's almost fully rested. He is walk prone. He's walk prone. Throws a four-seam fastball, a slider, and a curveball. One out with runners at first and second. And Chevelle Stewart, the catcher, the box takes the first pitch for a called ball. Ball one. That's an air for called strike. One and one. Stewart is locked in and fit with tremendous power. There's a roller. Second. First. Oh. All right, so there's a ground ball to Freddie Knox who flips it to second for one, but they were unable to flip it, uh, get the second runner at first base. So there is two outs with runners at the corners. Still nothing, nothing at the top of the first. Stefan Ballard, the right fielder, steps in. Oh, no. Come on. And, and he was hitting .0048, but he just hit a home run, a three-run shot to center field. That traveled 441 feet. Ballard's first home run and third RBI of the season. Stefan Ballard has just put the gold coats out ahead three to nothing. Pants Delgado, the second baseman, is neutral and fit, hitting 233 this season. He's got a home run, six RBIs. Bases are cleared. Gold Coats three, B Wolves nothing in the top of the first. That one's inside, ball one. Balfour is tense. Did not go where he wanted it in that last one. That one's low ball two. Two balls and no strikes to Delgado, the second baseman. 
That's in it for called strike. Two balls and a strike. Balfour delivers with a slow roller to Franco, who picks it up and flips it to Balfour in first place for the third out. But the Gold Coach go and put three on the board. It's Gold Coach three, B Wolves nothing. Freddie Knox, Hanley Dexterous, Buster Biggs going to face off against Caesar Austin, who's got a 2.7 ERA this season, so far after one game this season, I believe. Well, two guys. He should have been two. Freddie Knox hitting 333 with a home run, five RBIs. He sure is. First pitch is uh, inside ball. Uh, good patience there by Freddie Knox. Bottom of the first already, 3 nothing. Uh, Gold Coats. Freddie Knox hits it. Foul down the first baseline. Tied up at one apiece, bottom of the first. Another ball by Caesar Austin. He's going to ready to throw his fourth pitch. High, but it's hit over the head into center field. That's going to be a clean single. Dunk Benito holds it up to keep him there. Down to Pennington. Good, good up. Yes, sir. Hanley Dexteris, the tense shortstop who's playing third base right now, hitting 185. One home run, four RBIs. Allen's high, ball one. One ball, no strikes. That's inside, ball two. Two and oh. There's a shot that's going into center field for a clean single. And Dexteris, one for one so far. All right. All right, good. I think that brought it. I think they relieved the tension, Pete. Buster Biggs comes up at 375 with two home runs, no outs, and two on. Fast runner at, at second base. An outfield single by Buster Biggs will bring him closer. That's a little flubber to Pennington. He goes to second for the first, but does not get him in time. They've got runners in the corners with one out, Pete. Yes, sir. After a long hiatus, 333 with a home run, two RBIs. The catcher behind home plate has a shotgun from our own. That one's in it for a cold strike. Strike one. Ooh. Swing and a miss. Strike two. No balls, two strikes to Franco with one out. Runners at first and third. There's fouled off along the first baseline. Out of play. That's inside ball one. One ball, two strikes with one out. That's popped foul along third baseline. Nobody's going to be able to get to that, so that's going to fall harmlessly along the third baseline. One ball, two strikes. There's a sacrifice bunt, uh -oh. and they got the runner from third for the second out. Oh, God. But Franco was able to get to first, so runners at first and second now with two outs. Tried to throw her on that last one. They didn't quite work, but Gina Torrance could still do it, the hot hitter. It's that one past the mound, and that's going to be in there, Pete. He's coming around from third is Buster Biggs, and he's going to get that first run for the Beagles. It's within two now. All right. The bro seal is broken. Magic Moore, the center fielder's neutral and fit. He's got a 385 average with one home run, four RBIs. That's high. Ball one. One ball, no strikes. Runners at first and second with two outs. That's in there for called strike. One ball, one strike to Magic Moore. There's a hard hit. Ground ball along the third baseline foul. One ball, two strikes, two outs. There's a smack going yes. into the gap. That's extra bases. They're going to get the tying runs. Oh, he stops at third. He stops at third. And now he's... No. She comes back. Okay, good, good, good. <laughs> <laughs> They picked up a run. That was a double by Magic Moore, and so runners at second and third. One more run across the plate. Billy LeBoyne comes up with runners at second, third, and two outs. They're getting right back in this odd pitch there by Caesar Austin down the dish. He's tense now, Pete. Ah. Ooh, swings in a bad pitch inside corner, strike one. What a piece. Pressure's way up here. Hits that one out in the center field, Pete. They're coming around. Oh, just a one runner. They're going to hold Magic up. And another single, Pete. The Beagles tied it up. They're right back in this. Yes, sir, and Eliza Peck, the catcher, Number stepping in. She's neutral and fit in 200 with a home run, three RBIs. Runners at first and third with two outs. Oh. That's popped up. And with two outs, everybody's running, everybody's running, everybody's running. But Pineda's able to get under it and make the catch for the third out. But the B-Wolves come right, roaring right back. So it's 3-3 as we head into the top of the fifth. I mean, the second. Uh, B-Wolves out hitting the Gold Coach 5-3. Messiah French, Guadalupe Pennington, and Caesar Austin coming up against uh, in the, the second inning. Number 46. Messiah French, no average yet on the season. He's a good contact hitter, not a whole ton of power. He's facing Tats Belfort's tense already with 7.04 ERA. Didn't expect to be pitching in the second inning. Goes his first pitch in, misses a little bit low, ball one. We'll know the count. And now tie ball game on the top of the second. Offers a strike on that one, number 36. 
His 11th pitch gets a signal from Liza Peck, winds up, slings it. This is just inside to Messiah French, who's hanging in there, waiting for that right pitch. That one's a hit liner up the middle, and she's not able to get that. That goes into the gap, and they're going to throw it to Knox to hold him up. Another single, and so far it's all offense, Pete. There's not a whole lot of defense in this game. <laughs> yeah. Well, Lupe Pennington, 308 on the season. And uh, hopefully... Unfortunately, we've lost Bender early. Belfer's going to try and hope to get her to hit into a double play. First pitch misses inside, ball one. The pressure's up a little bit here now. There's a strike and a nice curve. We're knotted up at one apiece. There goes the runner, the throw. Oh, they got him! Got him! They got, got him! him. Right. What a throw by Eliza Peck. Threw it perfectly right in there, and they get that lead runner. And that helps out. Now there's a foul ball to the right field side of two strikes on Guadalupe Pennington. It sure be nice for Balfour to put her away here. There he is, and it loses that tension. All right. Now we're in a good spot. Here comes Caesar Austin. A K man hitting 500 on the season. Uh, not a bad contact hitter, but looking a little bit tense here from what happened in that last inning. Nice arc and curve makes it in for the first strike. Oh, one to Austin. Low and away strike two. Belfort's going right at him here. Hoping to get out of this side before 20 pitches. His 20th pitch. Swinging him at strike three. Good inning there for the B-Wolves. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Coming up in the bottom of the second. That's Belfort. First at bat. Freddie Knox one for one. Haley next is one for one. Austin's at 4.91. Gave up five hits and 24 pitches in the first inning. Score is tied 3-3. The pitcher. Tats Belfour is hitting zero so far on the season. He is. Not an awful hitter. Not a great hitter. Hits that one hard right back to the middle. Pete and Tats Belfour is going to make a nice single. Dunk Pineda picks up the center field to hold him up. Way to start off. B-Wolves. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Three bags full. <laughs> Freddie Knox, the second baseman. One for one with a single today. Tats Belfour standing at first base. Nobody out. Belfour, not a whole lot of speed. No, won't test the catcher here. Oh, There's a no. shot that's going to the... Uh, Double play. Uh, there's a ground ball to the shortstop who picked it up, flipped it to second, and over the first for the second, a double play. Yeah, Haley Exter is hopefully it's smart here. He's one for one on the day. It's good to see Haley back in there. Hits it hard, Pete. It's deep to center field. That's out of here. Oh, jump over the wall. Home run, Haley. Yes. He's back in business, Pete. The crowd loves Haley Exter when he's hitting well. That goes 422 on the center field wall. It's his second home run, fifth RBI of the season. Yes. He gets the yes, props sir. from Buster Biggs. Buster Biggs steps in the left fielder's locked in and 50. He's 0 for 1 today, though. And Caesar Austin's up to 27 pitches here. There's a foul <laughs> along the first baseline. No balls, one strike. That's inside ball one. One ball, one strike. That's a smash hard, but foul along the first baseline. Biggs in the, uh, oh, behind in the, oh, over the outside corner for a called strike three, and Biggs goes down on strike. So the go the B-Wolves put one on the board, take the lead 4-3 as we head into the top of the third. Dunk Pineda, one for one. Peyton Nielsen, 0 for one with a strikeout, and Braxton Thornton, one for one. Balfour with 20 pitches, two strikeouts, giving up two hits. Dunk Pineda, the center fielder, started this game off with a single. He's one for one today. Pineda's average is .045. Mm. That one's inside. Ball one. One ball, no strikes. That's in there for call. Oh, that's that's in there for a strike. One <laughs> ball, one strike. <laughs> yes. Yes. That's in there for called second strike. One ball, two strikes. I was going off the umpire's inflection, and it kind of sounded <laughs> Threw me off uh -oh. a bit. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Oh, that's going to be dropped in front of LeBoink in right field for another single. So that makes Dunn Pineda two for two today. With a, he's got another single. Peyton uh, Nielsen's 0 for 1. He's hitting 154, but he's locked in and fit. So nobody out. Runner at first base. There's a foul ball along the third baseline. No balls, one strike. Dunn Pineda has a little, some speed there. Nielsen anticipated that one, but let it go for a cold. Ball, one ball, one strike to Nielsen. Tats Belfour looks in, delivers. Outside, ball two, two balls and a strike. Runner at first base. That's high ball three. Three balls and a strike. 
Tats Belfour is walk prone. That's in there for call to strike. We got an even uh, full count now. Three balls, two strikes. That's in there for call, third strike. And Tats Belfour seems to be firing up the afterburners, Tommy. He needs Braxton to. Thornton, the first baseman's up. He's one for one with a single. One out with a runner at first base. Dunk Pineda with some speed. b -Wolf's holding on to a one-run lead right now. That's inside. Thornton anticipated that. But let it go as inside. Ball one. There's a yes. shot hard along the third baseline just into the second row of seats there. One ball, one strike to Thornton. That's in there for called second strike. And Thornton's behind in the count. One ball, two strikes. Thornton hitting 419 this season. Oh, anticipated that one, but let it go. Yes. For a ball. <laughs> two and two. Swing and a miss, and Braxton Thornton goes down. Come on, Tats. <laughs> Let him know about it. Uh, Chevelle Stewart, the catcher, 0 for 1 today, locked in and fit. Two outs. Dunk Pineda still standing at first. Hey, safe. Throw over to first, keeping uh, Pineda close. Stewart anticipated that. A lot of let anticipating, you know? Hello, yeah. One ball, no strikes. <laughs> Allen's low. Ball two. Two balls, no strikes. Stewart's locked in as well, hitting 280 this season. That's in there for a called strike. Two balls and a strike. Stewart ahead in the count. Oh, he <laughs> lets that one go for a called strike. It evens the count up at two balls, two strikes. With There's a roller. Gonzalez is on it, picks it up, makes the throw over to first. And Stewart wasn't even halfway down the base <laughs> uh, So he I think Dexterous is hyped. Uh, going into the bottom of the third, B Wolves 4, Gold Coast 3, Alora Franco 0 for 1, Gina Torrance 1 for 1, and Magic Moore 1 for 1 with a double. Now Caesar Austin has some stats. <laughs> I didn't see them though. <laughs> Alora Franco 0 for 1, but you can't blame her. She's just getting back in. Hits that one hard in the gap, and she's going to go 1 for 2. Good hit in the left field there. Way to get back on base, Alora. Yes, sir. Gina Torrance, the second baseman, locked in and fit one for one with a single and an RBI so far today, Tommy. She's hitting 452 on the season. Oh, that smashed foul <laughs> along the first baseline. No balls, one strike. Allen's high, ball one. One ball, one strike. Allen's outside, ball two. Two balls and a strike to Torrance. That's in there. Count is evened up, two and two. Austin delivers. There's a line drive. Ooh. Foul. Just foul <laughs> along the first baseline. Count is still even two and two. There's a smash, and that's going into the gap. Yes. And everybody's running, and everybody's running, and everybody. Yes. And Gina Torrance has just hit a triple. Oh, I should have. Okay. It's All okay. Right. <laughs> hey, the crowd loves oh, Laura, Laura Franco was able to score from first on that, giving the Beagles a two run lead. All right, you got cheated towards a stand-up triple at third base. First pitch inside, a magic board strike. Oh, on the count. The crowd's in every pitch now. Bottom of the third, 5-3. B-Wolves a swing and a miss, strike two. Quickly in the hole is magic board. It's 4 7 on the season. Pops up a bunt. For the no. first out, they go to third, and they don't quite get cheated towards. Dang, damn it. I got to work on that. <laughs> Billy LeBoy steps in. He's playing right fielder. He's neutral and fit. One for one today. Gina Torrance standing at third base with one out. The Boink with the sacrifice, and it's a foot race. The Boink's out at first, but Gina Torrens was able to cross the plate. Give the B-Wolves another run, Tommy. Yes. Way to go. And Eliza Peck comes up looking good. Now Tense hits it hard, but oh, it's a little bit left. Pete, the crowd liked that. Unfortunately, it's, nobody gets it in, this, in the foul zone there. Outside corner strike oh, two oh, oh, oh. quickly affects oh, the whole oh, oh. season like that. Thought it was one side. He's a key man, Pete. Hits it hard down the line, but French picks up a third base, double pump, throw to first, and retired the side. So the B-Wolves put two more on the board, Tommy, making it 6-3. B-Wolves out hitting the Gold Coats 9-5. As we go into the top of the fourth, Stefan Ballard, one for one with a home run. Pants Delgado, 0 for one. Messiah French, one for one. Balfour at 40 pitches with four strikeouts. That's a lot of pitches for a relief pitcher. Stephon it Bell is. Bellard's one for one with that long home run, and already Tats Belfort's way down on velocity, way down on accuracy, hardly left in junk. He doesn't have much stamina enough 
so we probably won't see him pitch very much longer. Unfortunately, fourth inning, the Beatles are going to have to dip into their... Uh, oh, he hits that one hard over the head of Gina Torrance. That's going to be multiple bases as it gets past Magic Moore. He's throwing it to the cutoff man. And they're going to go... I'm sorry, over to first. That's a stand-up double. Lead off the side. Pants Delgado, 0 for 1 on the season, 226. One home run. And yeah, Tots Balfour is really losing a lot there. They got, it looks like they're going to motion to the bullpen, pick another reliever. Balfour not used to throwing over 40 pitches. And they're coming in with Benson Rushmore. Benson Rushmore has got a 9-0 ERA, 1.75 whip, and 6 Ks on the year. He throws the ball uh, about as hard as average, average junk. Not a whole lot of accuracy. He throws a four-finger, two-finger slider, and a curveball. And I'm going to sneeze. <sighs> oh, sorry, hold on. Uh, oh, sneeze lost. I lost it. All right. Ready to go here. Good contact hitter, Pants Delgado. Pants hurt us in that last game. He's got a runner at second base. Inside corner strike one. Good start by Benson Rushmore. He's hoping to go late game on this one. Only the fourth inning. He's got to put him away. He's got to go aggressively. Problem with losing a starting pitcher in the first inning, Pete. It's just it really handcuffs our, our squad. That one's hit hard the left center field. Magic Moore going back for it. Oh, it, I'm, he jumps, it hits him. It hits him. And the runner, they hold the runners up at second. It's a double. Magic Moore jumped to grab the ball when he didn't need to. And it bounced off his... Should have been an out. Is now a double. Runners at second and third with no outs. Rushmore throws a curve in there for strike one. He could say goodbye to the double play. Rushmore's got to get a strike on. Ooh, misses high and outside ball one. It's a tough situation with Beals being there. Winning 6-3 right now. Misses his own on that one well as well. Two of them on the count. Low and away. Oh, and that one's hit into the gap. That's going to be multiple bases. They're going to have to go to the cutoff. Magic Moore picks it up. And they're holding him up second. It's another double, Pete. Three, three doubles in a row, I believe. The shortstop. Number Guadalupe 36. Pennington, 0 for 1. She hits the ball with some power and contact. The outfield probably should have played deep on those last two, and they didn't. Check swing strike one, inside corner. And Benson Rushmore throws his ninth pitch. Now he's ahead to Pennington, hoping to drop her quick. Get outside to Franco, who picks that up, throws over to second. She gets that line drive one. Up comes Caesar Austin, who's still tense. The pitcher, the K-man, he's 0 for 1 on the day. He's got to run at second base. He shows bunt. She picks it up. Oh, foul ball. She was going to throw to first. Oh, on the count to Caesar Austin. Standing back in a stance in the right-hand batter's box. Flashes bunt, pulls it back, but it's a strike. Only to the count to Austin. He shows bunt again, and that's foul, and that's going to be strike three. Two down. Number 39. Dunk Pineda comes up, two for two. Only hitting 87 on the season. So it's Pineda's best day of the, of the season so far. Slider makes it high inside. Strike one, oh one the count. Low and away misses, ball one. And Benson Rushmore is throwing his 16th pitch, already starting to lose a little bit of stamina. Curveball makes it there, strike two. Yump likes what he's throwing. One more to go. High inside, but it's fouled off. Unfortunately, that's near the fans on the first base side. One and two the count still with two outs. Top of the fourth. Hits the little roller to Gina Torrance who picks it up bare hand, throws it to first and closes that out. All right, well the gold coach pick up two more making it a game. Tommy, it's 6-5 B-Wolves as we head into the bottom of the fourth. Benson Rushmore's first at bat. Freddie Knox one for two. Tanley Dexter is two for two with a home run. Cesar Austin's at 45 pitches with one strikeout giving up nine hits. The Benson Rushmore hitting 500 this season. <laughs> Caesar Austin's ERA is up to 6.23. First pitch is low, ball one. One ball, no strikes. There's a roller right up the middle into center field, and Dus uh, Benson Rushmore will have a single for him. <laughs> you don't lead off single. You don't expect that from a pitcher. <laughs> Not typically, no. Freddie Knox comes up one for two with a single on the season. Great contact hitter. He's got a very slow Benson Rushmore at first base, so he's got to get this one deep into the outfield to advance. And he hits a little liner, diving Pennington, picks it up, throws it to second for the first, but they're not going to get uh, Knox at first there, so it's one out, lead runner. Henley Dexteris is feeling neutral and fit. Tommy, two for two with a home run and a single. Speedy runner. 
Oh, Not fast on. enough. Nope. Freddie Knox got thrown out trying to steal second. One ball, one strike with two outs now to Hanley Dexteras. That one's inside. Ball two. Two balls and a strike. There's a smash that's high in the air, and it's going deep. Is it going to have enough? It's out yes! of here. Two home runs. For <laughs> <laughs> two two. For, three for three with two home runs for Hanley Dexteras. That was 384 feet, his third home run and sixth RBI of the season. He pulls into a tie for the lead. On the team with home runs with Bertha Banks. Ah, uh, too bad Freddie Knox wasn't still on base. <laughs> yeah, that Buster, would have been good. Buster Biggs 0 for 2 on the day. Wow, it's Hanley Day. Pete. Hanley, oh, he pulls that one down the right field side. Foul. Second one's right there for strike two, and quickly Buster Biggs in the hole. Caesar Austin, the K-man, throws his 55th pitch inside. Oh, Buster Biggs gets enough for a home run ball himself, but he pulls it foul down the right side. Souvenir, hard line nope. center. That one's nope, popped up nope. behind the plate. It's going to be an easy out and a third out. Stewart brings it in, ends the side. Way to Hanley Dexteris. The B Wolves now 7 5 with Peyton Nielsen 0 for 2 with two strikeouts. Braxton Thornton 1 for 2 with a K. Chevelle, Chevelle Stewart 18 pitches with a strikeout. Gave up two hits in his half of the inning. Peyton Nielsen, the left fielder, is 0 for 2 today. His average, he's hitting 148 on the season. No outs, nobody on. B Wolf seven, Gold Coats five as we head into the top of the fifth. There's a roller to Alora Franco. will pick it up, make the run over, and retire the batter. Braxton Thornton, the first baseman. He's one for two today with a single. He's hitting 406. One out. Rushmore looks in, delivers. A little high. Ball one. One ball, no strikes. He anticipated that one, but all he could do is catch a piece of it and follow it off along the first baseline. Evens the count up at one and one. Braxton Thornton playing first base for the Gold Coats today. That's in there for a called second strike. And Thornton is behind in the count. One ball, two strikes. Rushmore delivers. Swing and a miss. Braxton Thornton goes down on strikes. Two outs now. Chevelle Stewart, the catcher, who is locked in and fit. He's 0 for 2, though, on the day, hitting 269. Top of the fifth, Beeble 7, Gold Coats 5, Rushmore delivers first pitch. That's popped up into shallow left center. Gina Torrens is under it, makes the catch for yes. the third out, and we've retired the side. Good pace. Beeble 7, Gold Coats 5, Beeble's with 11 hits, Gold Coats 8. Alora Franco, 1 for 2, Gina Torrens, 2 for 2 with a triple, Magic Moore, 1 for 2 with a double. Austin's at 56 pitches, 1 strike out 11. Hits his ERAs at 6.43. Alora Franco, the first base. Well, one for two with a single. Hitting 364 this season with one home run, two RBIs. Allen's low, ball one. Allen's high, ball two. Two balls and no strikes. Allen's up, ball three. Three and oh. That's ball four. Laura Franco has reached, gets a base on balls. Caesar Austin is tense. He is, did not look good. Gina Torrance two for two. The triple to single. Great, great job there, Gina Torrance. <clears throat> First pitch makes it ball. There goes Laura Franco for second base. He tries to steal. Probably not a great idea, though. Evan just got off an injury. Fouled off, strike one. There's a little liner up the middle. That's, oh, Gina Torrance is going gonna, is gonna to stay. At second Good base, she's a little slower than, than normal after the, coming back from this injury, Pete. But uh, nice clean yeah, single. I agree. I don't think she's a hundred percent yet. Magic Moore one for two with a double. Runners at first and second with no outs. Moore takes the first pitch for cold strike. Strike one. Allen's high ball one. One ball one strike. Magic Moore. There's a smash. Oh, oh just caught by Pennington. Oh. And. They are able to turn two. Pennington flips it to second and over for to first for the double play. So there's a runner at third with two outs now. Pennington was playing over. No, one out. I'm sorry. Pennington was playing over on that one. She was easy for her to get there. Inside ball one. You got one out. Runners of the corner is single. Billy LeBoyne could bring in another runner. And it's a home run, Pete. He nails it. Crushed right off the bat. Three run dinger. I knew as soon as he hit it, man. Look at the crowd going nuts. His teammates. Wow. 390 feet. Billy LeBoink gets his first home run in 10th RBI of the season. You don't see many of those from Billy LeBoink, Pete. 
at 40. No, you don't, but, but that was a good pitch. Eliza Peck, the catcher, 0 for 2 today, hitting 182. She's neutral and fit. Bases are clear with one out. Peck pops that one into left field. It's back at the warning track, and Nielsen pulls it in for the second out. <laughs> she went for it. Yes, she did. She's had a couple of those, Tommy. They just haven't carried for her. I mean, she's she's put guys back on the warning track a couple of times. She has. Benson Washburn watched the first one come in to strike. Oh. Swings and misses the second one. Took the other two, but he's doing great. He's hitting 667, Pete. Low away ball one. Patience. Good patience. That one's in his wheelhouse. He hits it hard, Pete. It's going deep. Oh, but it's going to be just shy. Deep left field. Nielsen puts it up for that third out. Everybody wants a home run today. I was going to say, my partner's so excited. Everything hit the air. He's thinking it's going. As we head in the top of the six, it's Three Wolves 10, Gold Coats 5, Stefan Ballard 2 for 2 with a home run. Pants Delgado 1 for 2, and Messiah French 2 for 2. Rush wins at 24 pitches with two strikeouts. Right fielder, number 18. Stefan Ballard locked in 2 for 2 with a home run and a double. It's a dangerous hitter. Thankfully, nobody on base yet. Benson Rushmore throws his 25th pitch, just starting to lose a little bit of it his velocity and his junk and his accuracy. I don't know how deep he's going to be able to go. That's a problem. Outside corner, strike one. One apiece. Little roller to Knox. Three pitches. Knox picks it up, throws it to first. Franco grabs him. One down. The second baseman, number 52. Pants. One for two with a double. Good, good hitter, good contact, fair power. Hitting 250 on the season with one home run. Pops that one up at the top of the net. Foul ball, one on the count. With one out at the top of the six. Inside corner strike two. Benson Rushmore, number 44, is in the driver's seat. 10-5, B-Wolves over the gold coats. Good gives check swing up by the hands by the gum chewing Delgado on the right-hand batter's box. There he is, strike three on number two. Looking good still, Benson Rushmore. Hoping to get out of this inning quick. Number 46. Messiah French, two for two. The double and a single. Only 111 on the season, so just an odd great day by Messiah French. He's a good contact hitter, real good contact hitter with speed. Gets that one down the line. Luckily, that's going to be foul. Oh, on the count to French. Second pitch, check swing strike to the infield is going to guard the lines for French. Vincent Rushmore pitch 34. It's a little roller to Knox who picks it up, throws it to Franco who's standing there already. Three down. All right. Still 10 5 B Wolves as we head in the bottom of the six. Freddie Knox 1 for 3. Haley Dexter is 3 for 3 with two home runs. Buster Biggs 0 for 3 with a strikeout. Austin's at 73 pitches, one strikeout, one walk. Freddie Knox, the second baseman, one for three with a single. He's hitting 333 this season with a home run, five RBIs. Oh, that was a good pitch. Pitch is in there for called strike. Caesar Austin is rattled. There's a roller to the second baseman. Delgado picks it up, makes the throw, and just gets Freddie Knox. <laughs> the speedy Freddie Knox. Knox is quick. Here he comes, Pete. Hadley Knox is three for three with two home runs and a single. The crowd all on their feet. Look at them, they're all standing. First pitch is high, ball one. He's not going to swing at trash. Everyone is standing for Hanley and Xterras. It's great to see number two. Hits it hard up the middle, Pete. He's three for three. Everybody loves it today, Pete. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. He's everybody's hero again. <laughs> Buster Biggs, the left fielder. Neutral and fit. He's 0 for three today. He's due, Tommy. Yes. Uh-oh, there goes Caesar Austin. He's finally gotten rattled enough. They're bringing in Larry Cunningham. Cunningham, a starting pitcher, relief pitcher. He's got a 2.16 ERA, a 1.08 whip, six strikeouts. He's feeling neutral and fit. He does not have a lot of velocity. He doesn't have a whole lot of junk, but he's got amazing accuracy. He's not fully rested, so he's pitched uh, probably a couple, two games ago. He's got a four-seam fastball, a two-seam fastball, a slider, and a changeup. It's going to be a double switch, so they'll have uh, they'll have uh, the new pitcher taking over Messiah French's batting position, and they'll have uh, Haley Hooper, the right fielder. She'll come in and play third base um, in in in, uh, in relief in of uh, Messiah French. <laughs> um, she's got one error. She's hitting 182 on the season. She's tense. But fit, she's got a little bit better than average speed. Her fielding is going to suffer tremendously since she's playing uh, out of position. She's normally a right fielder. This is third base. She's got about an, a little bit better than average arm, and she's got right power versus right-handed pitching. So 
The fourteen and a half million now dollar rookie. There you go. Now at third base, Haley Hooper. First pitch to Buster Biggs is fouled off. No balls, one strike, one out. There's a shot. That's going. That's going to be caught by center fielder Dunk Pineda uh, for a long fly out. Two outs. Four Buster Biggs is having a struggling today. Here comes Laura Franco. I didn't see what she was. I'm sorry. Great power hitter. Good patience outside corner. Ball one to Franco. They go to first and they do not get Hanley Dix to this. Comes back. The crowd doesn't like it. There's a low and away. Ball two. There he goes for second. It's the hit and run. Hanley Dexterous is around towards third. He's going to get to third base, Pete. Wow, yes, that sir. worked well. Good single by Franco there. Yes, sir. Runners at first and third. Two outs. Gina Torrance, three for three. Triple, two singles, and two RBIs. She's wow. having a pretty good day herself, Tom. Yes, she is. First pitch is in there for called strike. Strike one. That's fouled off along the third baseline. Nobody will get to it. That'll fall harmlessly. No balls, two strikes with two outs. There's a roller that's going to get through into the outfield, into left Jeez. field. Gina Torrance, four for four, Tommy. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so amazing. they score another run. Dexterous crosses the plate. Runners are first and second now with, with uh, two outs. Magic Moore, one for three. Two fast runners at the plate. An outfield single would be great, but he hits ah. a little bloop in Delgado. They're only going to be able to get that third out, but that's all they need. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So we're heading into the top of the seventh. Peebles 11, Goldcoats 5, Guadalupe Pennington 0 for 2 with a strikeout. Haley Hooper's first at bat and Dunk Pineda 2 for 3. Rush was at 34 pitches with 3 strikeouts, giving up 2 hits. The ZRA is down to 6.43. Do you mind if I switch out uh, Buster Biggs? No, not at all. I think because he's, he's 0 for 4, maybe we'll give, uh, we'll, give, we'll give a chance for Benny Balmer to come in there. Benny Balmer? Okay. Yeah. All right, so coming out of left field, uh, Buster Biggs, who struggled at the plate today. And we're going to bring in Benny Ballmer, the left fielder. He's hitting one on the season, neutral and fit. He's got about average speed. He's a very good, uh, excellent fielder with a strong arm in left field. He'll be taking over duties in left field for Buster Biggs. Here's a shot that's going right into center field. Magic Moore will pick it up and get it in quickly, holding... Guadalupe Pennington to a single. Haley Hooper's tense but fit. Runner at first base with the no outs. Hooper hitting 182. She's got power versus right-handed pitching. Oh, That's boy. That's going to be into the outfield. And Magic Moore is going to pick it up and get it thrown in very quickly to Gina Torres. And now we got, oh, that was the wrong button. Runners at first and second with no outs. And Doug Pineda, who's two for three with two singles. Hitting point oh eight three on the season, hmm. and yet two for three today. Yeah. Allen's low ball one. Rushmore starting to show a little wear and tear on his velocity. Yeah. Allen's high ball two. Two balls, no strikes to Dunk Pineda. That's in there for called strike. Two balls and a strike. Top of the seventh, no outs. Runners at first and second. That's in there for called second strike, and the count is evened up two and two. Rushmore is really starting to chug along here a little bit. That's in there for called third strike. There's one out now. And Peyton Nielsen, the left fielder, comes in. He's neutral and fit. Hit 0 for 3 today, hitting 143. You got runners at first and second without a lot. They don't have a lot of speed on the base pass right now, Tommy. Yeah, one funny. out. That's in there for called strike. Strike one. If Nielsen can hit one on the ground, we can probably turn two here. That's what we're hoping for. There's a roller. Oh, he took a while to throw that. Yeah, it kind of took a funny bounce when it hit the uh, edge of the carpet. Took him a second longer to, to field it than he thought it was. But they got the runner going to second for the force out there. Two outs now. Runners at first and third. Play the batter. There's a shot that's going to go foul along the first baseline. No balls, one strike with two outs. Braxton Thornton, the first baseman's up. Oh, There's a on. shot that's going into center field for a clean single. Magic Moore picks it up, gets the ball in quickly, making it 11-6. B-Wolves. I was just hoping Chevelle to get him Stewart. out of the side, you know? Yeah. Chevelle Stewart's locked in and fit, hitting 259. Benson Rushmore. 
Delivers a called strike, strike one. Runners at first and second with two outs. There's a roller. Dexter is going to be on it. Pick it up, make the throw, yes. and they get him for the third out. So the Gold Coach pick up one, and it's uh, B-Wolves 11, Gold Coach 6. B-Wolves out hitting the Gold Coach 16 to 11. Billy LeBoy 2 for 2 with a home run. Eliza Peck 0 for 3. Benson Rushmore 1 for 2. Cunningham's at 9 pitches. Right Billy LeBoy, the Billy right fielder, likes LeBoy. the high pitch. He's 2 for 2 today with a home run. First pitch is low, ball one. There's a roller to the shortstop. Pennington who picks it up, makes the throw to Thornton across the, for the first out. One out. We can't all be three for three, Pete. <laughs> no. <laughs> Eliza Peck, 0 for 3 on the season. Oh, I'm sorry, 0 for 3 on the day. Only hitting 174. Hits one hard up the middle. She's not going to go 0 for the day. She's 1 for 4. Pineda stops in the center field. Good single by Eliza Peck. They're still moving, Pete. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Benson Rushmore, one for two with a single, hitting 500 this season. Maybe time. They're going to take a look here. Liza Peck over at first does not have a lot of speed, but uh, Benson Rushmore is going to take a seat. Ruby Green is going to step in. She's hitting 125 on the season, feeling neutral and fit, but a little bit better than average power. A little bit better than average contact and about average speed. She's known around the league, though, as an RBI man. So let's hope she can put that to use and get Peck home. Ruby Green steps in. One out. Takes the first pitch for a called strike. Strike one. That one's high. Ball one. One ball, one strike with one out in the top, bottom of the seventh. That one's high. Ball two. Two balls and a strike. That's up, ball three. Three balls and a strike to Ruby Green. Oh. <laughs> Swing and a miss. And the count has gone full. Three balls, two strikes with one out. Green fouls that one off out of play along the first baseline. There's a roller down third base. Going to first for one. Ooh. But they did not get Ruby Green at first, so the runner go, uh, from first was out. So it's two outs, but Ruby Green standing at first base. And Freddie knocks at the plate. Two outs. He hits it hard into the gap. Ruby Green's going to be going around. They're both going around. That's going to be multiple bases. Ruby Green is coming for home, Pete. And Freddie Knox is going to hold up at second base, but Ruby Green is going to walk across the plate and hit 12 6. Yes, sir. Hanley Dexterous, this shortstop, is locked in and fit, Tommy. It's a tough out. He's known around the league as a utility player. He's hitting 290. Takes the first pitch for a called strike. Strike one. Ooh. That's a hard hit uh, ground ball foul along the first baseline. No balls, two strikes with two outs to hand it Dexteris. Smashes wow. that one into uh, center field. Got a runner coming around third. He's going to score. Make it with <laughs> Dexteris with a single. So much going on right now. Betty Bulmer in the left Dexterous. field. Dexteris. Five. For five, Pete. Five for five. <laughs> Betting ball was bad a thousand. He never does. Oh. oh. Had to come to an end with a weak pop up to first place. Three down. <laughs> there you go. So Avery, Ruby right? Green. Well, what? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. What? What? Uh, I was saying Avery. I thought maybe. Top of the eighth. Yeah, we'll go with Avery. We should be able to get through two innings with Avery. Uh, yeah. Top of the eighth, we're heading in there. Bewell's 13, Gold Coat 6. Stefan Ballard, 2 for 3 with a home run and a double. Pants still got a 1 for 3 with a double and a strikeout. Larry Cunningham's first at bat. Avery with a 0 0.00 ERA. The right fielder, number 18. Stefan, 2 for 3 on the like Pete mentioned. Pretty, pretty good. Hitting 125 in the season, so it's kind of an interesting day. Avery slings his first. Ooh, brushes him back off the plate. Ball 1. One another count. Top of the eighth, 13 to 6, Beebles. That misses away on the outside, 2 0. Avery's got to get it together here pretty quick because he's got a popped up behind the net. Foul ball, 1 and 2 the count. Avery's just got to get these two innings, put them away. Check swing, strike one. We're knotted up at two apiece. Swing and a miss, strike three. Avery K's his first. Batter. Way to go, Smack. I haven't seen Smack in a while, Pete. It's good to see him out there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And he's throwing hard. Pants Delgado. What's that? He's throwing darts. Oh. 
That's Delgado, one for three. Takes the first pitch inside, ball one. Delgado's a real good contact hitter at 242. Chewing gum. Check swing strike two, and Avery is in command. Number 45 gets his signal from eight. From, that's it right back to him. He said, pick it up, throw it to Franco. Two down, Pete. We're almost out of this inning. Good pace. Larry Cunningham comes up and goes down. We knew that was coming. Juanita Hernandez. They're going to play the old croc from last year. The right fielder comes in. Juanita is a little bit tense, though, recently. She's normally a good contact hitter. Not a whole ton of power, but we'll see what she can do here. She's hitting 316 on the season, so that's pretty good. Just that it's been a little bit... A little bit shaky recently. She's not having a Hanley Dexteris kind of a day, that's for sure. She's going to pinch hit. She anticipated that curveball inside and didn't swing because she knew it was bad. 1 0 the count. Pops that one up the right field. Billy Blaboink is going back just short of the track. He's going to grab that for the third out. We're done with the eighth inning, Pete. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. New pitcher, Juanita Hernandez. The pinch hitter will be replaced by Philippe. McGee, Philippe McGee is a relief pitcher. He's got a 3.72 ERA, a 1.14 whip at 5 Ks on the season. He's neutral and fit. He's got uh, better than average velocity, better than average junk, but his accuracy suffers. He's pretty fully rested. He's uh, known as a composed pitcher around the league. He's got a four-seam fastball, a two-seam fastball, a slider, and a curveball. Heading into the bottom of the eighth, it's Alora Franco, two for three with a walk. Gina Torrens, four for four with a triple. Magic Moore, one for four with a double. Philippe McGee with a 3.72 ERA. As we head into the bottom of the eighth, B Wolves 13, Gold Coach 6. Alora Franco, the first baseman, two for three with two singles and a walk. Got her average up to 4.17 after a long time off on the IR. Takes the first pitch a low, ball one. Allen's low ball two. Two balls and no strikes to Franco. Mm. Swing and a miss. Two balls and a strike. There's a foul ball. And very quickly, the count is evened up two and two. Allen's high ball three. Full count. McGee is known as a composed pitcher, but that's high ball four. And Alora Franco twice today, Tommy. Yeah, she's having a good, good first day back. It's good to have her back. And Gina Torres 4-4-4. Four, four, four. If she goes 5-5, five five, Pete, imagine having two batters go 5. No pressure. Low and away swings at a bad pitch, but pulls it foul. Only one the count. They got a fast Laura Franco at first. He's probably not going to no. steal. That's the easy pop-up to ruin it. <laughs> yep. With a little off at center field. Doug Pinedo. One out. Only one, though. Dag. Dag, nabbit. <laughs> anyway, Magic Moore, the center fielder's neutral and fit. Got good connection versus left-handed pitch, and he's one for four today. Laura Franco standing at first base. Oh, <laughs> Swole, swing and a miss before it looked like he swung before the pitcher released the ball. He did. There's a shot in the air, but it's going to be foul and out of play. One, no balls, two strikes with one out. There's hey. a smash that's going into the gap. That's going all the way to the wall. Everybody's running around. Everybody's running around. Everybody's running around. And he's going into third, and Alora Franco is going to cross the plate for <laughs> another triple. It, it did not look good there. It looked like he was going to go down three pitches. Billy the Boink, two for three on the day. He's got to run at third base with only one out. Hits it hard into the dugout of the Gold Coats. Hopefully everyone's okay. That one's a pretty good Bring me that elbow. That one's hit into the gap right center field. Is he going to get it? Pinedo ah. grabs it, but she's going to come home. But she's deep enough. She slides in. Or he, I'm sorry. Mashmore slides in. Gets that run. Oh, boy. All right. We're not leaving anybody on base this time, Tommy. Eliza <laughs> Peck, one for three today. Hitting 208. Two outs in the bottom of the eighth. That's a smash. That's going into right field. And it's picked up by Stefan Ballard for the third out. <laughs> Look at that score sheet, Tommy. <laughs> B-Wolves have scored in every inning. It's 15-6 as we head into the top of the ninth. Guadalupe Pennington, one for three with a strikeout. Haley Hooper, one for one. And Dunk Pineda, two for four with a strikeout. Smack Avery. Manning the uh, bump for the B-Wolves. Three outs away from his save. Guadalupe. Fouls that one off. Straight back out of play. No balls, one strike. Pennington hitting 310 this season. There's a smash that's going into, and Billy LeBoyk is able to get up on, on it and make the catch for the first out. Haley Hooper, the right fielder, playing third base is tense but fit. 
She's one for one today. One out in the top of the ninth. Avery looks in, delivers for a called strike. Strike one. That's an error for called second strike. Hooper finds herself in the hole. No balls, two strikes with one out in the top of the ninth. A little low outside, ball one. One ball, two strikes. Tried to get her to chase, but she didn't. Oh. Allen's outside, ball two. Two balls, two strikes now to Haley Hooper. There's a roller, and Dexteris is on it, picks it up, makes the throw to Laura Franco for the second out. Two down. Dunk Pineda, two for four with two singles, hitting point zero eight zero. Represents the last hope of the Gold Coats. Two outs, nobody on. Pineda takes the first pitch for cold strikes. Back Avery with a big sneeze there. A little bit of load that ball up. Ooh, a little low ball one. One ball, one strike to Dunk Pineda. That's popped yes. up in foul territory behind plate. Peck is there to make the catch for the third out. Beatles win in decided fashion, Tommy. <laughs> they did not just beat the gold coach. They put a beating on the gold coach. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That was the biggest offensive victory I think we've ever seen. I think so, play. too. That was crazy, like you said. Now, I mean, if you just looked at the gold coach, 11 hits, 6 runs, that would win most games for most teams. They got three in the first, two in the fourth, one in the seventh, but the B-Wolves, like you mentioned, scored in every inning. Every inning. 3-1-2-1, 3-1-2-2. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, two three-run innings, three two-run innings, and two, uh, no, three one-run innings. Oh. That's crazy. That's, <laughs> that's nuts. 20 hit, hits, 15 runs. Haley Dexteros goes five for five. Uh, uh, Gina Torrance goes four for five. It's just wow, there it is. On, yes, on sir. The, on the coats, I'll start it off. You know, Pineda has a good day. He goes two for five. Thornton goes two for four. Ballard goes two for four. French goes two for three. So, like I said, the you know the uh, the gold coats did not play a bad game. Um, Nielsen struggled for them. He was zero for four. Uh, Stewart was zero for four. Although he got a run, he must have been walked at some point. Um, so they didn't get all the production there. Pennington was only one for four, uh, but you know they brought in a lot of subs to try and change things. It just wasn't enough to handle those B-wolves. No, no, and and uh, how surprising was it coming? You know, we come off the first four games of the season where our pitching staff just looked horrible, yeah. and then in this game, basically we're doing platooning. We have to platoon our pitchers because we we lose our starting pitcher in the first inning, and yet Tats Bell four. You know, he settled down and got in there. Benson Rushmore, he settled down, got in there. Dusty Winder, he went down. You know, he got, no. What, well, no, Winder didn't was play. It? Avery, Smack Avery. Uh, Avery, uh, Smack Avery, who's been amazing. I mean, we're going to, I think if we keep, if he keeps uh, on this uh, trajectory, he's going to be one of the best closers in the league by the end of the season. <laughs> yeah, know? yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so you that's the thats the column I'm looking at, the, uh, the strikeout column, and you look down there and there's 10 strikeouts. Yeah. So yeah. the uh, the B Wolf pitchers, you know, did it did a job today. They did a did a did a, did a full time job right there. Thank Over you. there for the B Wolves, you look at uh, Freddie Knox two for five, Hanley Dexteris, as we've said, five for five. He scored three runs. He had two home runs, three RBIs. Look at he goes from 185 average up to 312 in one game. Benny Balmer 0 for four. I mean uh, Buster Biggs 0 for four. Benny Balmer 0 for one. That was yeah, that was poor pitch choice. That's yeah. <laughs> Not his fault. Um, Laura Franco, two for three. She scores four runs and gets two walks. Welcome That's, back yeah. to Laura. <laughs> <laughs> no, and she goes. She's up to four seventeen, which I think she was. She wasn't up that high. Gina Torrens, like we said, four for five, two scored two runs, three RBIs. She had uh, Magic Moore, two for five with scored two runs, had two RBIs. Uh, Billy LeBoink, two for three with he scored a run, hit a homer, and had six RBIs. Billy LeBoink had six RBIs in this wow. game. Yeah. Holy crap. Uh, so Eliza Peck, one for five. Uh, you know, Balfour, one for one. Uh, one for one, yeah. And uh, Rushmore, one for two. So, yeah, they were getting it done today, Tom. It's just, I mean, what a game. I wish we could go back and 
I can't wait to watch this one over and over again. You know? Yeah, geez, well, you look at the batting averages there. We got a lot of people in the 300s. I mean, a couple five, you know, 400s. Yeah, yeah. Just uh, they're they're really really hitting the ball. All right, well, yeah. Pitching Gold Coast Austin comes in, gets the loss, throws five and a third innings, gets 14 hits off him, 11 earned runs, walks a batter, gets one K, gives up three home runs. So it's a big loss. His ERA slips to an 8.22. He goes 0-2 on the season. He's replaced by Cunningham, who comes in and throws one and two-thirds innings, gets five hits off him in that short amount of time, and two earned runs. <laughs> um, there, nobody was safe on the Gold Coast today. Uh, his no. ERA is at a 3.60. And then McGee, Fibber McGee comes in, throws an inning, <laughs> gets one hit off and two earned runs, uh, walks a batter. Uh, he's given up the least amount of damage. He's got a 5.06 ERA, and he's on the races. I, I was really supi- surprised they stuck with Austin as long as they did. Yeah. Because the B, like I said, the B was were score, scored in every inning, and he was in there five innings. You know? yeah. And you're like, at some point, don't you just pull the guy? Yeah. Anyway, for the B-Wolves, unfortunately, Hurley Bender went a third of an inning. He gave up two hits and one earned run. He had one strikeout, though. His ERA is uh, up to 4.41. His record stays at one win, one loss. But uh, Tats Belfour racks up his first win of the season. He goes two and two-thirds, and he gives up four hits, three earned runs. He has four Ks on the day. He gave up a home run. His ERA is up to 652, and his record is 1-0. and oh. And uh, there, I guess there is no save. Benson Rushmore went four innings, gave up five hits with two earned runs, four strikeouts himself. He's at 6.75. So our, our relief pitchers seem to be coming down. Uh, he's got one save on the season. Smack Avery came in, pitched two innings, gave up no hits, no earned runs, didn't walk anybody, had one strikeout, did not give up any home runs. He still got a zero ERA and uh-huh. remains. No wins, no one losses, and one save. Wow, so that, that's pretty way good. Way to go smack. The problem with that, you know, that pitching is losing a, a starter so early in the game and having yeah. to use two backups in one game. We're gonna need, we're gonna need Japani or Ortiz to pitch a complete game, basically. Yeah, yeah, we're yeah in. coming off of this. We definitely want to try and go as deep as we can without having to use a, any relief yeah. pitchers. Uh, the concern now is is Hurley be, is. Is Hurley Bender going to have to miss a start? Yeah, I don't that, think. Uh, right, I, I hope know. not. He'll have at least four, uh, three games off before he's going to have yeah. to pit full. Yeah, right. Yeah. Ortiz, then Japani, then uh, Levon. Yeah, so he'll have three games off. So hopefully, he'll be back. Three stars of the game, Tommy. Can you guess who the first one is? I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> first star of the game, superstar Hanley Dexter. Stare is the shortstop playing it finally playing like a superstar. Five for five, two home runs, three RBIs, scored three runs himself. Way That's to go, Hanley. Hanley Dexter is unleashed. It was like all of yeah. all of that that good play that should have yeah. that we should have seen in the last season and a half season and a third came out in one day. <laughs> yeah, he just you know, all and that tension just spilled out. Yeah, he's <laughs> my like, new hero. Yeah. I am done being tense. Bang! Yeah. <laughs> Billy LeBoink, the 40-year-old right fielder, a B-ranked, uh, comes in. Number 12 does what's unexpected for him. He goes two for three, gets a long ball, home run, six RBIs, like you said, Pete, in a run. If it weren't for Handley's day, Billy LeBoink would have been in front. Yeah, and I, I'll be interested to see where those six RBIs puts him in the uh, RBIs. I think he's got to be... Probably on that on that list, that top ten list somewhere. Yeah. Um, and then rounding out the three stars, the third star, the B ranked, that Gina Torrens, the second baseman. I mean, she's been a star of the game consistently, you know, since the beginning of the season. Really, yeah. Gina Torrens, the second baseman, four for five, a triple, three RBIs, and she scored two runs. We get to it. Tommy G had eight hits, one home run, seven RBIs. He had five Ks on the day, a 47 percent contribution. PJ with 12 hits, two home runs, eight RBIs, and then five strikeouts with 53% contribution. So, nice. Great. Still coming at it close. Still close. Yeah. Five Wait. and five for the strikeouts. That's pretty cool. And Post- then it was eight and seven with the RBIs. So. Post-game show. Well, that, that, you know, that gets us to a spot where it's like, geez. Oh, that, well, okay, so let's take a look at the schedule. 
our next game is going to be those overdogs here at home. So um, there are 20 games. I kind of want to, I kind of want to take a look at these because uh, you know to see where we're at in the standings for this next game. Is that, is that what you're thinking? Unless you, you want to wa unless you want to watch any of these other ones. Let's see. Um, oy. Sirloin Scrapplers, Buzzards, Warblers. Not really. Okay. I don't think so. Water Bullets, Overdogs. Yeah, I don't. I don't need to watch any of those. All right. Well, then let's tell you how these how these games are are coming in as they come in. So are you ready, Pete? Okay. As I'm ready. Twenty games here. Let's go. Start it off. Sirloin's Wait. travel. To, oh. <laughs> I must hit the wrong button. I had to schedule. All, <laughs> all right, sirloins <laughs> at the Grapplers in San Jose. Tell us. All right, the sirloins and the Grapplers. Sirloins jump out to an early lead, but the Grapplers come roaring back. Then the sirloins come roaring back, and they win at 7 6. It's all Colorado Buzzards and Warblers. Inter, intra stadium game, and the Buzzards take it 11 6. The Moose and the Sandcats. The Moose take an early lead, Ooh. extend it, and wind up winning it at 10 to 1. It's the same thing as last year. The Crocs go out to Oakland to play the Outlaws. Crocs win at 7-2. The Philadelphia Freedom and the Wide Loads go back and forth, but the Freedom win it in 10-5-1. Jackson, Philadelphia play the front runners. It's Jacks first, and out front they win at 5-4 and 10. Herbisaurs and the Nemesis. Nemesis take that 5-0. Water Bullets all the way over the other coast to play the Overdogs. It's close, back and forth, and oh, the Water Bullets take it 12-7. Freebooters in the hot corners. It's hot corners, 2-1. Wide loaders all the way out in Hawaii to play the Burners, and they wish they wouldn't have gone there. The Burners <laughs> beat them 7-2. The Arctic's in the heaters. It's heaters all day, 9 nothing. Wow. Moonstars go up to San Jose to play the Sharks. Moonstars take a 2 none. Grapplers in the Sandcats, and it's Grapplers extending a lead, but the Sandcats claw back, and Uncle Demi, it's the Grapplers, 10-5. Two Sandcats lost. Sirloin's out at Michigan to play the Moose, their old place. Sirloin's beat them bad, 11-3. Outlaws in the Warblers. Outlaws with an early lead. Herbosaurus at the Freedom in Philadelphia. It's all Herbosaurus to start with, but Philadelphia claws back and wins it in 11, 11 10. The front runners in the Gold Coats. It's Gold Coats 2 1 and 10. The Blowfish go down to San Diego to play a Platypipe. Blowfish beat them 3 0. The Buzzards in the Crocs. It's Crocs 6 4. Philadelphia Freedom up in New York to play the Wild Pigs, and they beat them hard 5 1. Yes, Ooh. sir. <laughs> what you got? That is it. Over in the Pioneer Conference, Tommy, the Pathfinder Division, as it sits currently right now, <laughs> this minute, <laughs> Crocodons and Blowfish tied up with records of 7-3, and three, holding a two-game lead over the Burners and the Moose, who are tied with a game, uh, for second with a record of 5-5. Five and five. Houston Crocodons, the best run differential in the league, at plus 23. Serious. Uncharted Division, wow. It's a four-way tie for first place. The Hot Corners, oh. Wild Pigs, Platypi, and Outlaws are all six and four. The old Buzzards, who won it, who won the whole thing two seasons ago, they have a losing record at four and six. They're two games back. And in the Journey Division, the Sandcats, who have taken, you know, recently had just took two losses, uh, find themselves playing 500 balls. Still sitting in first place at five and five, but just behind them, uh, tied for second, Grapplers in Arctic sitting with records of four and six and a game back behind those Sandcats. So the pressure is starting to mount down there, Tommy. It is. <laughs> in our Explorer Conference Seafair Division, the Houston Jacks are on top at six and four, as you would expect them to be. And right behind them, guess who? It's the front runners and the Heaters who are playing 500 ball at five and five apiece. Yes, sir. In our very own trade division, the Sirloins and the Water Bullets are in a two-way tie for first place, both teams with records of 7-3. and three. Just behind them in second place, alone in second place, the <laughs> B-Wolves with a record of 4-5. and five. They sit two and a half games behind the first place Sirloins and Water Bullets, and they've improved their run differential to just a negative three. Pretty, pretty darn good. But we're going to be facing those overdogs in the next game, so... If we lose the Overdogs, that brings us tied with a Nemesis again. Um, yeah. Otherwise, it brings us up a little bit better. But down in the Curiosity Division to fix to finish things off, San Diego Moonstars are up seven, seven and three. They're a, a full game ahead of the San Diego 
San Jose Saw Teeth, uh, who are playing six and four. Yes, sir. So I, I, yeah, I'm hoping for a win against the Overdogs. We get to go to 500 ball, and then let's get uh, let's get north in a, <laughs> north yeah. of of the of the win loss column. That's what I'd like to see. Right. Well, we'll see some old familiar faces next time we host our next game here at. Uh, I want to look um, at some top current season leaders here. Right, yeah. At, uh, oh, yeah, that's, that's probably a good idea. Gina Torrance alone at the top of the batting average with a 486. Billy LeBoink. Oops. Sixth on the runs batted in list. He's got 11. 11 runs batted in. Chili Dunlap is leading with 14. So he's 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 in the hunt. Huh? Jeez, Jill. Gina Torrance, 486. That's crazy. Gina Torrance has a 500 uh, uh, on base percentage. I don't see. I don't see. Puts the, her in fifth. Any what? dogs? I don't see any dogs on this list. Although I oh. wouldn't expect to. Any overdogs? Batting three. Gina Torrance. Yes, 17 hits. Wow. And Gina Torrance. I mean, you would expect Gina Torrance to be there, but Guy Gold. He's got eight extra bases. So we're going to look out for Guy Gold. There and Dick Berger's got 13 Ks on the year. We don't have any. We don't have any. Uh, oh, strikeouts. I'm sorry. Dick Berger struck out 13 times. Wedge Wagner struck out 12. Ball. So they're yeah. yeah they're they're strikeout prone. I was thinking these were pitchers, but no. Gina Torrens with five. Now a three-way tie for stolen bases with Robin Yu and Yoink Sacks. Robin Yu is an over as a, he's an overdog. Yeah, Robin. You got to keep him off the. We'll have to keep him off the bases. He's got a good old Robin, yeah, and then, uh, yeah, caught stealing Freddie Freddy Knox. <laughs> I tried it. I mean, I, you know, I, I thinking to myself, don't do it because the catcher's just too good. I mean, it's, you know, maybe maybe later in the game if they have to pull him or something, you know, for a sub, yeah. maybe then. But I'm like, I, you know, I'm, I'm going to at least try. Yeah. I got to. <laughs> yeah. Well, because we're not, we weren't running at all. So I'm like, yeah. you know, maybe I could catch him off guard. Next page, you got wins there. Look at all those hot corners. They got three pitchers who have two wins. Yeah. I didn't expect to see that. Down earned run average, Chasey Kim's number 10, 106. We're, we're facing him. I've always thought Chasey Kim was one of the one of the, the best pitchers. At least when we were out in, in LA, I always thought he was underrated. How come Julio Hooper doesn't have a team? They must have yeah. let him go. I was going to say that we're going to oh. have to check the. We got to check that, the. Uh, that's right. Yeah. Well, let, let's go there real quick because I did. I did see that. I saw um, player development. If you go here, let's go down. Yeah. Right after I get. You want to read it off? Hold up. Uh, player development. Right. No, yep. we're going here. Okay. Sure. So. Uh, okay. Uh, Lucy Finnegan. Gets signed onto the Blowfish, replacing Julio Hooper. They released Julio Hooper. Um, <laughs> what? Julio Hooper is a 42-year-old closing pitcher, B minus. He's got a 55 velocity, 77 junk. His accuracy is uh, only a 13. He's got 24 power and 46 connectivity. He was making four million seven hundred thousand, and they picked up um, Lucy Finnegan, who's a C plus relief pitcher. Yeah, uh, she's got a 49 velocity, so that's a negative six. Uh, 71 junk, so a negative six. She's got a 30 accuracy, which is a bump. That's really the biggest bump. Yeah. Uh, in Finnegan's favor, they both, uh, you know, he, she's got 25 power. Now Hooper's got 24, so it's really kind of a push. But yeah. the, the ability to connect, though, um, fin- uh, I mean, Hooper is a much better hitting closer yeah. than uh, than Finnegan's is. So. And I mean, I'm um, oh, sorry. But sorry. she's only making two million two hundred thousand, so they're saving a little bit of money. I don't know if they're already thinking of saving money or what. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, you know, um, Julio Hooper, forty-two, might be his last season. But he might get picked up. I mean, he's leading the league in K's, and he's a closer. Yeah, he's which a, is what you want. You want your closer leading yeah. the league in the. Well, but I mean, I don't. Closer doesn't see it as enough innings to lead the league. You know what I mean? Like, I guess right. he's. You know, it's just. Yeah, I don't know, but well, okay. Well, Hooper will probably land in another team before the season's over. Beavis Ortiz, he could work on his intimidation, gain some of his velocity, possibly become composed, but it cost us a million dollars. Yeah, and then uh, Fran Japani, I, I saw her in the locker room today, Tommy, and Japani yeah. tossed a piece of garbage 
into the bin on the first try. So I think her accuracy is getting much better. Oh, look at that. Well, we're going to need her. Plus in three. The, she's going, she's up to 49, almost 50%. No, good good timing go. on there, yeah, because she's going to she's gonna start, uh, the, not, not this game, but the next game against the, uh, who's she starting against? Oh, that's going to be against the Sandcats. Hey. Yeah, we're going to need her there. Hopefully she can go a full game. Okay, anyway, we better cut this off. It's been a long one. Um, so, yeah, for we'll see you next time right here. Face the B-Wolves. Uh, that, that game will air on Thursday. Uh, and, and until then, this is Tommy G. And this is PJ. And we're saying, get out of here.